Who's the baddest shark around? Who's the smartest shark in town? The Basics has the answers as this week, just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water, we take a look at the cult favourite Predacon poet, Skybite. The original Skybite toy was released in the year 2000 as part of the Japanese original series Transformers Car Robots. The figure was a recolor of the 1999 Transmetal 2 Cybershark from the Beast Wars toy line and transformed into a biomechanical Great White Shark. In Japan, the character was known as Gale Shark, but when the series was imported by Hasbro in 2001 and given the new title Robots in Disguise, Gale Shark was renamed Skybite. As seen in the Robots in Disguise animated series, Skybite was the second in command of Megatron's small team of Predacons, who battled Optimus Prime and the Autobots on Earth at the turn of the millennium. In theory, Skybite was a cunning, merciless and fiercely intelligent warrior, whose beast mode's abilities to both fly and burrow underground made him a triple threat across land, sea and air. But in practice, he was a luckless loser for whom little ever went right. A bit too theatrical for his own good and prone to panic when things didn't go his way, whose constant failures were the source of much of the show's comedy. Skybite's other defining characteristic was his love of poetry, particularly haiku, and he often composed poems of his own. Would you like to hear my latest work? The cobalt ocean roils. Zephyr's blow cold and another hapless foe is crushed beneath my heel. Your imagery is derivative. It lacks semiotic cohesion. And the hapless foe is you. As the series went on, Skybite came to fear that he was in danger of being replaced as Megatron's right-hand man by the far more competent Scourge, which only drove him to greater extremes in an effort to discredit his rival and prove his worth to his leader which in turn only led to bigger failures as Skybite's desperate attempts to gain approval repeatedly backfired on him in increasingly embarrassing ways. Some particularly high-profile screw-ups, like the time he took a tower full of humans hostage and then had to save them from a disaster he caused, or when he accidentally released the Predacon's human prisoner Dr. Onishi, even caused the humans to think that he was a good guy. Though initially mortified, Skybite eventually realised that he quite liked having someone look up to him, and when the other Predacons were imprisoned at the end of the series, Skybite managed to evade capture and swam off into the sunset to enjoy life on Earth. Who's the smartest shark around? Who's the coolest shark in town? Skybite, that's me! Ah! Skybite was the breakout character of Robots in Disguise, a lovable underdog who quickly became a hit with fans and whose popularity would grow well beyond the confines of the often overlooked series. That said, it took quite a while before his fan favourite status would translate into any new appearances or toys. It wasn't until 2010 that a new incarnation of Skybite would be introduced, as an exclusive toy released at that year's official Transformers convention, BotCon. The figure was a recolor of the shark-themed Decepticon submarine Sharkticon from 2004's Transformers Energon. As seen in the convention's exclusive comic book, set within the continuity of the original 1980s Transformers cartoon, this new version of Skybite was a creation of the alien Quintessons, built to lead their Sharkticons. But in terms of personality, he was functionally identical to the Robots in Disguise character. Later stories released through the Transformers Collectors Club saw this Skybite ally himself with fellow Quintesson creations, the Generation 1 Predacons, with whom he would go on to found the Predacon faction seen in Beast Wars. Over the next few years, Skybite's persistent popularity continued to bear fruit. In 2011, a Transformers animated version of the character was introduced in that year's BotCon comic. And in 2012, an online fan vote saw him shortlisted for the Transformers Hall of Fame, though sadly he lost in the final round of voting to Wheeljack. But only one month after that, the character made his debut in the pages of IDW Publishing's comic books. 
In this continuity, Skybite was a Decepticon who had abandoned the war when he could no longer stand the atrocities committed by his side. He returned to Cybertron after the war's end, and formed a musical partnership with the Autobot Jazz, reciting his poetry for audiences at McAdam's old oil house while Jazz played bass. He would remain a regular background character for the next several years of IDW's comics, later relocating to Sanctuary Station, a space station commune for peaceful Decepticons in Earth's solar system, where he continued to pursue a career in the arts. Eventually, he would meet a heroic end, defending Sanctuary against the armies of the planet-eating Unicron. In 2014, Skybite received a brand new figure in the Transformers Generations toyline. The first that wasn't just a retool or a recolor of a pre-existing one, as part of the series' celebration of the Transformers franchise's 30th anniversary. This figure was subsequently released in Japan as part of the Transformers Legends toyline, prompting Skybite to appear in the tie-in manga published alongside it, which continued his story after the end of the Robots in Disguise cartoon. The manga sent him on a series of dimension-hopping adventures, including a visit to the goofy parallel universe of the Legends world, which culminated in him joining the Autobots' dimensional patrol to help protect time and space from evil. In addition to these various ongoing comics appearances, Skybite would also continue to occasionally pop up in unexpected places. His original Robots in Disguise voice actor, Peter Spellos, would reprise the role for a short video released through the Collectors Club's Ask Vector Prime Q&A column in 2015. And a super deformed figurine of Skybite was released in the Tiny Titans line in 2016. Now, in 2019, Skybite is about to make his first return to TV screens since Robots in Disguise in the second season of the Transformers Cyberverse animated series, with multiple new toys in the accompanying toy line, which rather ominously described the series' version of the character as a harbinger of doom. The Cyberverse cartoon depicts Skybite as the Decepticon rival of the Autobot Jetfire, and we'll see the two enemies being played off against one another by Starscream for his own ends. Fan's love for this shark earned his place in history, our hero, Skybite. Those are the basics on Skybite, and that's my attempt at a haiku. Let's hear you write one about him in the comments. Wait, let me try again. Click the like button, support me on Patreon, and subscribe for more. Nailed it.